Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It is miserable outside and freezing. So we are gonna take you on a tour of our brand new studio. Good things come in small packages. It's a small studio, but nonetheless, it's ours and we love it. So come on with us. Here she comes. <laughs> okay. This is mostly the closet. <laughs> and it kind of is. But it's a good size closet. Don't let the small door fool you. Here is our humble abode where we're going to do a lot of our filming. And a lot of our editing, as you know, we have four kids and we needed a quiet space, as you can imagine. So, this is our nice little space. Kyle's got his desk set up here. We've got our computer. We've got a lot of our gear. We've got batteries. We've got GoPros. We've got drones. We've got extra computers. We've got everything we possibly need to do all of our filming in this room or slash closet and we're pretty excited about it. Hey guys, it is so cozy in here. We've got some artwork up on the wall, making it a little bit homey for us. Shout out to Shannon down in Florida, our buddy. He made us this custom sign. It is absolutely beautiful. Uh, we'll put some links down in the description for his YouTube channel and his Instagram account. Check him out if you got a minute or two. And yeah. We are pretty stoked to have a space that is quiet and away from the chaos of family life to do our filming. Today we are switching gears a little bit and I want to share some tips and tricks with you that Kyle and I have both picked up along the way when it comes to targeting certain species of fish. Today we are going to go over and share some tips and tricks with you on how to catch ling cod and rockfish, particularly ling cod which is my all-time favorite fish to catch and eat. So we are going to start this off with explaining what a lingcod is. A lot of you will know what that is, um, but one thing we've noticed is we've had a lot of viewers commenting on photos and videos that we've posted of us catching or holding a lingcod and being really confused about what type of fish that is. So we are going to share with you today what a lingcod is for starters, because um, you need to know about them if you're gonna target them and if you're gonna catch them. So what is a lingcod? A lingcod is a predatory fish, uh, which means it eats other fish. It will eat, honestly guys, almost anything. They're very aggressive. They will even eat other lingcod the same size as themselves. Um, they are also ambush predators and they you often find them with rocky structure. And they will also hide in kelp to hunt other fish as well. And one of the things that they're characterized by is their massive head, especially when their mouth is open. They've got these massive, kind of scary looking heads and they have a mouth full of 18 very, very sharp teeth. Um, <clears throat> they also live along the coast of North America. So they have a broad range of where you will find them in our waters. Um, all the way from Alaska, all the way down to the Baja in California. There is a huge variety of size when it comes to lingcod. They can live up to 25 years um, and they grow fairly quickly. So Kyle and I have caught some as small as 12 inches. So that's small, obviously babies. Um, the largest known lingcod ever to be caught was just over 60 inches and 85 pounds. That is enormous. That definitely beats Kyle and I's personal best. Kyle's personal best was 36 and a half inches. And to me, that was huge. So I can only imagine, I don't even know how they would have caught that. Honestly, that's insane. Um, another thing that I like about these fish is they do come in a variety of colors and tones. They almost look like they have like little leopard spots on them. And minus their kind of big, ugly looking head. They're actually quite beautiful. Um, Kyle thinks they're gorgeous. <laughs> they're one of his favorite fish for sure um, to catch. And sometimes they even have like a blue tinge to their meat. And 
there's different theories of why this happens. Some people think it's because, like some scientists think it's because of you know, the crab, the amount of crab that they eat. They also will eat crab as well. Some people think it has to do with like the amount of chlorophyll in the water and blah, blah, blah. So anyway, really cool. We've caught a couple where you cut them open and they are extremely blue. And then we've caught some open that are just their regular white meat. So it's kind of a surprise every time you catch one. All right, so one of the first steps to targeting lingcod is knowing where to find them. <laughs> Um, seems simple enough. They <clears throat> will be wherever there is a rocky bottom and structure. They like structure, they hide in dens. That is where you're gonna find them. You are not gonna find them on sandy bottoms. So to find where the rocky structure is, especially in a new area that we haven't fished before, we use the Navionics app. Um, it's not free, there is a cost to it, but it's quite low. And the reason we use this is, well, simply because we don't have fish finders that have maps on them. So um, this is another option as well. And like I said, just comes in handy. It shows us where all the rocky structure is and the different depths. So here you can see, this is what the Navionics app would look like. And this would be a structure that we would be going to to fish. Um, it goes all the way from 132 feet and then all the way up to 42 feet. So that shows you that that is quite a large underwater structure and that is what you want when you are targeting ling cod. So now you guys know what a ling cod is and you know how to find them and where they are. So what do you use to catch them? That's obviously our next question. Um, <clears throat> so I just want to say these are the methods that Kyle and I use and what typically work for us on our fishing grounds. Um, it doesn't mean our way is the only way. We just want to share with you what we have found successful um, in our fishing ventures. So my personal favorite, I'm going to go over it first, um, is a West Coast fishing tackle swim bait. This is a 10 ounce swim bait. It's got the paddle tail on it. As you can see, it's got your two hooks. And the reason that I love this so much is when I've been using bait in the past, it often will get hooked on something on the bottom and I've got to pull my bait up constantly to check it when I get nibbles. This guy, you can have it in the water and it will take many hits before you got to pull it up and check. Um, and you're not having to do bait rigs and fiddle around with bait. So that equals your line is in the water a lot more, which means potentially more fish. Um, beautiful little swim bait and what we do with it is there's two things we can do with this guy. You can jig it vertically up and down or what we found also works is if you drift it along the bottom given that the current isn't too strong that day and both of those seem to work. So what else do we have here? We are sponsored by West Coast Fishing Tackle. Some of you may know that. Um, so obviously we love their quality gear and that is all we use for the most part. So this is one of our new favorites. Kyle really loves this. This is the Hyperglow 2.7 ounce flat fall jig. And it's got the two, I should probably take it out of the package, but it's got two nice hooks on it. One of the reasons why we like this as well is it falls generally pretty slow um, and it's got a really nice flutter to it. And ling cod are hunting from the bottom of the ocean floor looking up. So it gives them plenty of time to see this and catch the flashy colors and they are on it. We have even caught some nice ling and other rockfish as well on this 10 ounce octopus jig. Nice colors, UV glow, definitely catches their eye. And like I said, they're an aggressive fish. They will go after, honestly, a lot of things. All right, so last but not least, this is another method we use to uh, target link cod. This is your sliding bait rig. It's got your dual hooks here. I honestly don't love this method. Um, it can be a giant pain in the butt. Kyle quite likes it. Um, so you throw your herring on there and it gives it a nice curvature and a barrel roll and you just drift it along the bottom. Um, 
yeah, like I said, the only thing that I don't like about it is you're constantly having to check your bait, especially if you're getting little nibbles here and there. Um, I like having my rod in the water as much as possible. Um, but this also does produce results. Kyle has caught some nice lingcod using the herring and we use brined herring. And if you wanna know how to brine your bait, we have a video on that as well that you can check out. All right, so one of the final steps is what gear are we using? What gear do we have in the water? So this bad boy here is the Alios 300. This reel is phenomenal. Um, however, we did just recently purchase a couple of Alios 400s that we are super excited to throw on and give them a go. And we don't fish with any other reel, honestly. This is a do it all reel. And then if you guys can see this beautiful rod here. This is the West Coast Fishing Tackle Pacific Jigging Series rod that we also stand by, tried, tested and true. We love this rod. All right, so now we have our line here. I don't know if you guys can see that and holding it up. So we have 65 pound braid with 40 pound mono. The reason we use the 40 pound mono for our leader is it is abrasion resistant, unlike the braid. So when you are fishing on the bottom, you are going to be rubbing against the rocks at times. And we, this is an Alberto knot here where we attach the leader. And we are going to be coming out with a video about all the different various knots that we use as well. So stay tuned for that. As I already mentioned, lingcod are one of my all time favorite fish to catch. Two reasons. The first reason is that they put up one heck of a fight, especially the bigger ones. They are so fun to catch you guys. And the second reason is they taste amazing. They are easy to cook. They have a mild flavor and you can do so many recipes with ling cod, which brings me to my three favorites. So in our house, our number one favorite is fish tacos and number two, Poke bowls are another top favorite. My kids will devour a poke bowl in like minutes. And the third is your traditional fish and chips. Um, these fish are so tasty. They may look really gross, <laughs> kind of ugly, but they make up for it in how they taste and full flavor. All right, so that's it. Now you guys know just as much as I do about catching Link God from a kayak. So go out there and go get them. Please don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe so you don't miss a single one of our videos. We are just getting started for the new season. We're gonna have lots of cool videos coming up. So stay tuned and until next time, catch you later. <laughs> Rosie. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. That's right.